Hello everyone, I'm the Penny Pinchy Prepper and welcome to my channel. Uh, for those of you who are new to the channel, if you like what you see, do me a favor and consider uh, subscribing, giving me a thumbs up. <clears throat> for the you of those who have been around for a while, thank you very much. I appreciate you keep coming back. Um, today, we're going to get around to that uh, collapsible spoon for uh, backpacking. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below explaining why I came up with this thing, you know, what you, what you need to know about it, all that kind of stuff. I, that's, for those of you who don't know the way I do my videos, that's usually how I do it. In, in the beginning of the week somewhere, I'll show the product of, or pr project that I want to build, um, what it takes to make it and uh, um, usually a, a little bit about it and why I think it's worth investing your time in. Um, and it's usually a way to save you money, which ultimately that's what this channel is about, saving you money. Uh, the other thing I do, and I always forget to mention it, is I collaborate all my videos um, sometimes these these projects they take you know two three four videos sometimes to do and i will actually collaborate all those in a playlist um so you can actually if you want to see from beginning to end everything about it or you're seeing the uh the first part of the video that that says hey check out this product this is what you need to make it and you don't want to go searching for um the other video um because i forgot to leave it in a link it will eventually end up in a playlist um either which way it, it doesn't really matter um i just want it to be easier for you guys to find all the videos that are uh, collaborated with each other so with that rant and taking up the first two minutes of the video, <clears throat> let's get into it. So this is what we're making today. This is for, um, you know, uh, freeze dried meals like uh, Mountain House, um, uh, Peak Fuel, uh, Happy Yak, things like that. The, the tall bags um, to be able to get down in there and... and um, really get at your food without getting your hand messy and then being able to be collapsible to easy put away and they actually weigh oh maybe a gram more maybe a gram more than just the regular teaspoon that you turn this into so let's get on it um I'm going to take a second, pause you guys, move the, uh, the angle of the camera, and we'll get into this. Alright guys, so the first thing you're going to need is one of these from the Dollar Tree. Talked about it in the first video. <clears throat> Not going to go through that spill again. But uh, you get these from the Dollar Tree, they're a collapsible backpack, or a collapsible back scratcher all right and honestly um they work all right but as you can see they got these uh round tips and uh it's more of a tickle than a scratch <laughs> and they they bend pretty easy so I, I i never found them useful as an actual back scratcher and so this is how my mind started going um so what you do is you expand it out and you can see there's um, basically three full lengths and then fourth if you include the handle. And what we want to do is count the handle as one, go to the second one, and just at the end of the second one here, we're going to want to cut it. Now you can use... Um, a Dremel with a cutting wheel or I actually use a hacksaw here because um, Them Dremels and cutting wheels they can get a little uh, Wacky sometimes even when you're you think you've got full control of it, it you can lose control of it and I just 
uh, to keep it from getting ripped up and, and mangled, I, I just, I go ahead and I use the, the hacksaw. So, um, right there, all right, so you can see, if you extend it out, there's the handle, there's the one length, and then here's the second, and then right here's the third, and so right at, from, from this direction coming over, right about there, all right, and that's where you're going to want to cut it, all right? I'm going to go ahead and pause the video, cut it, get back to you. All right, so when you get done, you should have something that looks kind of like that. And if you'll see right here at the, the end, if I can get it to focus, it left just a teeny bit of the, uh, the next extension um, exposed. You, you can't get rid of it. Um, but I like to leave just a teeny bit exposed. Um, so, once you do that, this, I mean, do whatever you want with it. Um, I don't know. Whatever you want. Maybe I'll figure something out later. Uh, so then, the next thing you're going to want to do is take your teaspoon, all right, and you're going to want to cut it off about in an inch and a half back from the spoon. So, uh, between right here at the spoon and right here on the handle, which would be about an inch and a half, go ahead and cut it off, all right? <clears throat> um, I'm going to use a Dremel for that with cutting wheel. show you what I mean for those of you who I might be sounding foreign to but uh, just a Dremel with the cutting wheel okay so I'm gonna do that real fast so you don't have to listen to the noise and I'll get right back to you all right everyone once you got the the spoon off it should look you know something about like that now you're gonna want to bend it just a little bit um bend the where what would be the handle up a little bit so you get when you go and uh you make it the spoon isn't straight you see it's not it's not straight like a normal spoon would be it's it's got its little angle on it um you're going to want to find out what's most comfortable of an angle for you, but for me, it, it's, uh, it's, it's not that much. It's just a, a little bit, just enough to be able to make it easier to get down into the, 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 the bag and scoop it out without, um, you know, the handle being in the way of the bag. Uh, so just bend it just a little bit. Um, I would be happy with something about like, uh, oops, trying to get you in the, the view there. Something about like that. Um, some of it you'll actually be able to, once you start to set it in there, you'll have a way to change Yeah, sorry. You'll have a way to kind of change the angle a little bit inside, as you see, uh, when you go to set it. So, that's kind of what you're going for. That's what you could have, and that's what you don't want. <laughs> so, don't want, definitely don't want. Yeah, it's all right, but you really want something kind of like that. All right, so I'm going to get on to the next step. The next step is, is you're going to take this uh, water weld from JB Weld. Um, technically, you could use any sort of uh, long setting JB Weld. And when I say long setting, anything over uh, 15 minutes which is usually the high heat or the water. And I think there might be one other, but I can't remember off the top of my head. 
but I'm going with this one because it's actually designed to harden while underwater. So if you, for any reason, <clears throat> don't get this little blue seal here that I got, if you don't get that seal right, which is used from the plastic of the uh, the back scratcher, that is one thing I forgot to say. We will use one finger from the back scratcher to seal up the end there but if you don't quite get that sealed right and it happens to be sitting in there at least you know that it's not going to dissolve and you're going to end up with jb weld in your your uh your food somehow since it it gets harder or it gets hard underwater it doesn't get soft underwater so just a little information to know so uh, I'm going to mix this up real fast. Sometimes it takes a little while for it to get warm, which that's what means that it's activated and ready to use is you'll feel the, the thermal heat start to create inside of this as you mix it together. And I'll get right back with you. Okay. So now the reason we leave a little bit of the end here is... Uh, we actually want to be able to push it back in um, and give a little strength, but we're actually going to push it in using the putty so that it, the putty gets inside of it a little bit and connects to it and makes a, a strengthening right through here, um, if that's even a word. But um, so you just start pushing it down in there. And you're going to just basically make a nice little bed of this inside of there that the uh, spoon's going to be able to push down through. Um, takes a little bit. Um, but after you feel like you've gotten, you know, enough in here to at least, you know, get up here, up the spoon a little, or the end a little ways that's when you can say, okay, enough's enough and stop. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not gonna bore you with the details, so I'm gonna pause this video and get back to you in a second. All right, so once you get it in there, get it nice and cleaned off. All right, and it looks like that. That's when we're gonna Go ahead and put the spoon in. And we're going to push the spoon in just to, oh, I'd say somewhere right, right about, there, uh, right about there. Um, we want to leave a little bit of room for the, the plastic work and if you need to adjust the spoon afterwards you want to leave a little bit of room to be able to bend the metal without bending the 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 tube <clears throat> now when you do this you're going to notice that it already pushed in like that you see the the big gap and that's okay because we don't actually want the the jb weld even or uh, flush with the uh, the end of the the tube here, we actually want to go ahead and take something and uh, push it down a little bit so it's recessed so we can get the plastic down in and create the outer cap. So it's not just sitting on top there, it actually comes down in the tube a little bit. So go ahead and push that down in there. I'm going to do the same and I'm going to get back to you in a moment and show you what it should look like when it's done. All right, folks. So when you get it all done, you should make sure that it's really good and cleaned out. And as you can see, well, let me see if I can bring her into focus. All right, you can see that, oh, wrong side. I can actually get down in there a little, a little ways, right? So you can tell that it's recessed back down in there just, just a little ways. 
Um, but make sure you get, this isn't straight walled. It, it, I mean, it, it is straight walled, but at the very end here, it actually curls up and over at the, um, at the lip. So, um, oh man, I'm such a hard time getting this into focus, guys. Sorry. But, um, right here at the lip, it actually curls towards the spoon all the way around. And so do your best. I, I missed a little teeny spot right there you can see. But uh, to get it all cleaned out from underneath there because that that lip is going to help keep the plastic set down in there to where it won't come out. Um, but once you get it all cleaned up like that, you're going to let it sit and dry for a good half hour to an hour make sure it's really good and dry and then we'll move on to the next step so i'm going to pause you guys because i'm sure you don't want to sit here and listen to me bs for the next hour <clears throat> um so uh so far at this point you should be looking about like that which is very very similar to that the only difference is is we're gonna put that little plastic cap at the end um, when we get back. So, get back at you in a few. All right, folks, now that it's had uh, time enough to dry, uh, here comes the hardest part out of the project. And if you wanna skip this part, you can. Um, I do have another suggestion that you could do. Um, if you happen to have some uh, one hundred percent additive free silicone um, caulking. Um, it's the same stuff that they use for aquariums. Uh, you could use that to seal this up instead of the method that I'm going to talk about next, which is you're going to take the scratching part, all right, and you're going to cut one of these fingers off. Maybe. <laughs> oh, I must have used my other pair of scissors when I did this last time, but <clears throat> you're going to take a finger off, and there's two different methods you can use at this point. All right. I prefer using a, a, a heat gun, and that's what I'm going to go with. But you can also use one of these little butane pocket torches and what you're going to want to do is simultaneously try to heat the metal heat the end of the plastic that doesn't have the ball on it and shove it down in this hole real good and get it all the way around shoved in there it doesn't matter what it looks like anywhere else just make sure that you get it shoved in there all the way around. And then when you're done getting it in there and it's stuck and you can see it's all the way around there, gently heat it up as you circle it around like this and allow the, the plastic to slowly melt down and take shape. And when it melts down and takes shape, it should look something kind of like that, all right? If you notice, I did end up with one little speck sticking out right there. But basically, that's what you're going to go for. But just, I can't stress how important it is to make sure to get it down inside where we made that, that gap, that cavity, all right, that recess. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it real fast, even though I've got an example that I, I just showed you right there. I'm going to go ahead and do it myself and uh, sum this, uh, wrap this video up when it's done and I'll show you. Alright guys, when it gets all done it should look uh, something kind of like this. See I got it cleaned up and I mean it's not perfect but it's definitely... Uh, definitely... Uh, Sealed all the way around, nice and tight and clean. 
Um, not a perfect job, but clean enough. It collapses. It expands. It will hold food without knocking over. Well, the stuff in the spoon might fall over, but <laughs> the spoon doesn't twist. But there it is, guys. A DIY collapsible backpacking spoon. <clears throat> Um, before I go real quick, um, if you liked anything you saw here, found it useful or anything like that, guys, please do me a favor, get down in there and smash the thumbs up, leave me a comment, something, um, just, you know, get them algorithms flowing, um, and, uh, if you guys need a good gas mask, or uh, any sort of respirating equipment, whether it be filters or et cetera, et cetera, anything to do with respiratory, um, go check out my affiliate, um, Parcel Safety. Uh, they have everything you could basically need for your, your respir respiratory needs. And uh, you guys can also do yourself a favor and take advantage of my 25% uh, off discount code. It'll be down in the description below. The affiliate link will be in the description below. And um, the other half of this video, which was why I even decided to make it and what good it's for and yada, 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 if you care, will also be in the description below. Um, Till next time, guys. Remember, God's good and God bless.